you are watching. You are awesome. In 1783, an English geologist named John Mitchell wrote that it might be possible for something to be so big and heavy that the escape speed from its gravity is equal to the speed of light. Gravity gets stronger as something gets bigger or more massive. For a small thing, like a rocket, to escape from a larger thing, like Earth, it has to escape the pull of our gravity or it will fall back. The speed that it must travel upward to get away from Earth's gravity is called escape velocity. Bigger planets and stars have more mass, so have stronger gravity than Earth, so the escape velocity is much faster. John Mitchell thought it was possible for something to be so big that the escape velocity would be faster than the speed of light, so even light could not escape. In 1796, Pierre-Simon Laplace promoted the same idea in the first and second editions of his book Exposition du Cisne du Monde. Some scientists thought Mitchell might be right, but others thought that light had no mass and would not be pulled by gravity. His theory was forgotten. In 1916 Albert Einstein wrote an explanation of gravity called general relativity. It is a very complicated theory, but there are two important things about it, mass causes space to bend or curve. Moving things fall along or follow the curves in space. This is what we call gravity. Light always travels at the same speed and is affected by gravity. If it seems to change speed, it is really traveling along a curve in space-time. A few months later, while serving in the war, the German physicist Karl Schwarzschild used Einstein's equations to show that a black hole could exist. In 1930, Subramanian Chandrasekhar predicted that stars heavier than the sun could collapse when they ran out of hydrogen or other nuclear fuels to burn and die. In 1939, Robert Oppenheimer and H. Snyder calculated that a star would have to be at least three times as massive as the sun to form a black hole. In 1967, John Wheeler gave black holes the name black hole for the first time. Before that they were called dark stars. In 1970, Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose proved that black holes must exist. Although the black holes are invisible some of the matter that is falling into them is very bright. Thanks for watching.